the Bamboo Lab P1S just might be the perfect print farm machine. That is unless you do all of this first. Over the last two years, I've learned a lot about properly setting up a new 3D printer, whether it be for a farm or just hobby use. I'll share with you exactly what I do to any new printer before I release it for production in my print farm and even clue you in on some common mistakes I see people making with their setups. Now I know I said this is the best print farm machine, but to be honest, that's just my opinion after having run Prusas for years and eventually testing the viability of Bamboo Lab. I have a whole video on my other channel detailing this conclusion if you wanna go check it out after this. The first consideration before setting up a new printer, especially in a print farm, is a solid foundation. The last thing you wanna do is put this thing on a rickety shelf and hope for the best. This is the first mistake I see people making all the time with their 3D printing setups. For my print farm, I love these industrial adjustable racks. But regardless of what you're using, just make sure that it's sturdy. This of course becomes much more important when you're putting multiple printers on a single shelf or rack. The next consideration, which is related, is vibration dampening. Isolating your 3D printer from vibrations is really important, but it's especially important with fast machines that use input shaping. A common myth out there is that you must place your printer on a cement paver and a sheet of foam to do this properly. I've actually found this method to be overkill and actually unnecessary. You're certainly not gonna hurt anything by doing it, but what I do instead is to divide the shelf into panels and isolate each of those panels with strips of foam along the supported edges. I personally like three quarter inch thick MDF for this, but really anything with some mass will work. Just do not use flimsy plywood for this. All right, with a solid foundation established, the next consideration is power. The actual power requirements of your printer is gonna depend on the type you're running, but I found that general FDM type printers like this pull anywhere from 60 to 300 watts during use. The most being during the warm-up phase before the print starts. For this reason, you wanna make sure you have enough power for your setup. Now, obviously, if you're just setting up a single machine, there's really not much to worry about. But once you start getting past three or four printers, you really need to start considering the power available and the total potential power draw of that many printers. Now, if you're setting up your printers inside of your home, here in the US at least, a typical indoor circuit is gonna be 120 volts at 15 amps, or said differently, 1800 watts of total available power. Now this means you can technically run up to six of these small FDM type printers on one circuit or up to eight on a 20 amp circuit. In my main print farm room, I actually had a total of 11 20 amp circuits put in just to support the eventual load of all of these machines. Those 11 circuits currently power around 65 FDM printers, including these 12 new ones I just installed. The next thing I do and always recommend is to run your printer or printers through a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. This does two things for you. The first is that it protects your prints against power blips. It won't do much for an extended power outage, but will allow your printers to coast through a sudden power interruption. Some machines have power panic recovery, which allows you to resume the print once the power comes back on, but it isn't usually that reliable and you have to be present to restart the print job. The second thing the UPS does is acts as a power filter to protect the sensitive electronics inside of your 3D printers from variances in the incoming power. Basically cleans it by conditioning the incoming voltage, which could mean your printers live longer. And as a bonus, they usually also serve as a surge protector. And for me, that's cheap insurance, well worth the cost. Finally, to wrap up the foundational elements of your setup, I would highly recommend you add some lighting. Lights make everything easier from monitoring print progress, spotting issues, and performing maintenance. Throughout all of my print farm racks, I add these cheap LED fixtures tied to a remote switch. If anything, it just makes your printers look really good. Okay, on to the actual upgrades I alluded to at the beginning of the video. Now this seemingly random stack of parts is what turns a stock 3D printer into a production machine in my setup. And the first is an upgraded hot end. I always upgrade to hardened steel hot ends or at least nozzles because it means less maintenance down the road in terms of nozzle changes due to wear. I also generally change the nozzle size from 0.4 to 0.6 millimeters in diameter. With that done, I can turn my attention to filament delivery. It doesn't take long running a print farm to get sick of dealing with one kilogram material spools. Constantly monitoring and changing filament is a huge labor burden. So I run three kilogram spools on all of my machines, but that adds a level of complexity since none of them are set up to run that out of the box. For this reason, I've had to come up with several ideas to run these larger spools, from filament rollers to simple metal hangers to this, which is an assembly of some of the parts you see here on the table and is the latest iteration of my design. It's basically a quick change spool holder with a custom mandrel size for the spool types I'm running. After fabricating these steel rod sections myself, I slide on the main roller assembly, followed by this small collar that locks it in place, I tighten the grub screw through this axis location on the outside of the roller, and then finally add the end cap, which has reverse threads so it doesn't come unscrewed during use. 
This design requires no bearings and allows the filament spools to roll really smoothly. And yes, I did add this little detail in the end just to remind myself to spin it the correct way. It hangs on the metal racks with the assistance of this clip, which keeps it in place. There's a single self-tapping metal screw that drives in from underneath, keeping it from shifting side to side. And after laying out the locations for all these and getting them all installed, I should be ready to load them up with filament. Almost. You see, the last step is to address the filament entry location on the back side of these P1S printers. As you can see, it doesn't conveniently line up with the front mounted spool hanger, so I came up with this little roller design which attaches on the outside corner near that filament location which conveniently guides it around that edge. And it's attached to the outside of the printer via some double-sided tape. These little pieces actually come with the Bamboo Lab P1S for some kind of phone mount, but I just repurposed them for these. With those rollers in place, I can now load up a spool, route the material, and get these things to work. So whether you're setting up a rack of 12 new printers or just maybe fine tuning your hobby machine, I hope this video gave you some ideas. Remember that starting with a solid foundation, having clean power, lots of lighting, and easy filament management should help your printer run reliably for a long time. If you're interested in starting or growing your own 3D printing business, check out the Printform Academy course launching later this year. Happy printing.